Okay, from the NASA. I think the, this is not the worst one. The worst one is uh, when you have the snowstorm back to back to back. Okay, I think the several years ago, five, six years ago, there were back to back to back snowstorm, all of them like the this. So every time we have almost uh, the three feet the height, the snow. So I need to clean up every time the, on the roof for the snow. So the best way is to stay inside and stay warm. And but this time we are lucky because uh, there is no power outage. But sometimes we have the power out. But fortunately, UV is a very good for the, any the natural disaster because uh, actually we have the uh, the Long Island. Long Island is kind of barrier for the uh, worst snowstorm. Also, the most of the building at UV is raised up. So as I'm not sure whether you realize like the library and the carcinal, the engineer building, most of the buildings are raised up, so there's no fl flooding. Even though we have the Sandy last year, the after, uh, not last year, the year before, the Sandy was the one of the worst snowstorm, the, the New England area, but the, we didn't have, have the, any flooding. If by the New Jersey and the, the shoreline, a lot of flooding, but the, in case we have the uh, uh, closed campus, we need to move to the secretary. That's the plan. So, if you are on campus housing, so you can follow the direction. Otherwise, uh, you should be uh, you should care of yourself. The way at the time that you can walk together with the campus, the student. Okay, so I have a couple of announcements. Thursday, we are going to have the first exercise lab. GA, the Xiang Xiang will be in charge of the exercise lab. Please bring your laptop before you come to the classroom. So it's your homework to download the virtual machine the, by following the direction in the exercise lab document. You can find the exercise lab document from the canvas. Okay, you don't have to print out, just download the PDF file, use it together with your the virtual machine. For the virtual machine player, you can use either VM player or the virtual dog. It's your preference. However, based on my experience, the, the VM player works well for the window based system, and the virtual dog is okay for the Mac OS, but uh, there's no the restriction. You can use any the VM player here. Also, if you already install any other the operating system as uh, either the virtual machine or the standalone system is totally fine. You can use any the Linux system if you have the. We are going to use the Debian class, which is provided by the textbook. But uh, if you already install the Ubuntu or the CentOS, uh, other operating system, Federal OS is totally fine. Okay, so you can use it. even you can use the uh, the. Uh, Mac OS, if you want, Mac OS provide the same, the uh, the operating system as the basically is the same, the BSD Buckley, the uh, the Unix system, Linux system. You can use the Mac OS as long as it has the the GCC, the CC compiler, because we are going to practice with the CC <coughs> compiler. Also, if you want, to, you can use the Sigwin. Sigwin is not a Linux system; it's an interface uh, for the uh, Windows user who'd like to form, be familiar with the Linux system, I will show you the Sigwin, the example, but you can use the Sigwin, there's no restriction as long as it has a command line interface. We are going to practice the U and Linux the command with the shared programming, uh, the shared, and also the, we are going to practice the system programming with the CC and the system library. Okay, any question? What if I do not have the laptop or the my laptop is broken? It's a fine also. I'm going to check the attendance, the or the exercise lab, but I strongly suggest to attend it. So you can the practice it uh, by yourself or the, you can the work with your friend. But it's your responsibility to uh, the practice the at least one time the with or your the session. Okay? Any question? What if I never use the Linux system? It's totally fine. The GA will focus on the very, very the first time user for the Linux system, so don't worry. 
However, if you are already familiar with, this is a good time just to review, okay? It will be very easy for those who already used the, the Linux or the Unix system or any the share the program language. It will be very easy. Okay, any question regarding to the exercise lab? Okay, then, oh, one more thing is we do not have the enough the uh, power outlet. So please the fully charge it and also do not use while you commute in the morning. So many of the, the students out of battery, they cannot practice. Please the fully charge it and the save your battery for your the exercise lab. It will uh, last a very long time, so but uh, your practice is more important during the exercise lab. And also, the, we have the first quiz. I'm not going to remind every time, but this is the first one. If you uh, log on the Canvas the, to this week, as the first quiz. So you can solve the problem, then the, you can use the Word or any editor software, or the, you can use the, uh, the pen, pencil with your paper, then take the photo anyway, it's fine, but I'm not going to accept the uh, email submission. You need to upload to the canvas, then the GA will, will grade it, okay? That is the first uh, uh, quiz, okay? And regarding to your project, zero, one, two, uh, pretty much maybe next week, the, if the, I will explain a little bit of first, uh, the warming up project is not very complicated, it's just a simple project. I probably most of you guys already did the same or the similar programming in your the network uh, class or the any programming classes. Just a simple uh, the program to create the process and the child process. We will see so maybe next week or the week after to explain about the uh, project. Okay, so today we are going to discuss still is the introduction of the operating system. Mostly the last week we have talked about the uh, computer architecture, then what operating system is. So today we are going to discuss about the operating system structure, how the operating system OS is organized. Okay. So these are the basic the set of OS service that we can uh, expect from the operating system. By the way, what is the operating system? It's a software, right? It's a set, it's not just a simple one. The software is a set of software for what? It's a between interface between the user and the hardware. Using the operating system, we try to utilize, the, we try to get the benefit of the computer power. Okay, that is the main purpose of the operating system. Just like that, the, we need uh, something user interface, the UI. Okay, so operating system provide their own. So there are some standards also, the, depending on the operating system, they have the, their own character, unique, the user interface. So that's also very important, the, the service, the so user interface. So basically, what kind of the user interface we can expect from the operating system? We can classify into two folders. One is command line interface. Another one is graphical user interface. As you know, the graphical user interface, you can find such an example from the Windows-based system. Long time ago, though, when I was 20 something years old, which is the almost 25, 20, so, so almost 30 years ago, uh, I was in the military service because the, in my hometown, military service is uh, compulsory, so which means I need to stay the two years in the military camp. There were only the one month vacation for two years. Can you expect the two years I need to stay inside the camp? Like the camp is not like the, the UB campus, it's not that big. Sometimes it's just one small the camp. So, but we can do everything. So my, the, the camp has the one small computer. One time, the, the surgeon of the, our camp brought the new computer that shows us something colorful, the screen. Until before that time, I have used only CRT monitor. CRT, 
has the green color and the issue is something command line, the interface that we are going to see. So it was totally different, uh, the interface. Then the, my surgeon said, this is the Windows. Why Windows? Windows is uh, the, here, but uh, that was a Windows 3.1 interface that totally uh, changed the user interface in the history of the computer system. So we will see such a history and the example of the graphical user interface. However, most of the operating system, not only just the operating, any embedded operating system, prefer to use the command line interface also. Okay, command. So think about the Windows 10. Windows 10, the bring back the command line interface as the name of PowerShell the this time. Because still, the many of the developer administrator they prefer to use also sometimes it's uh, uh, the in terms of performance is better than the graphical user interface. The command line interface is also very important in our exercise right, because you guys are smart and already a lot of already have a lot of experience on the operating system. But many of the students have used only graphical user interface. So like the, even though you use the Windows, the Linux or Unix system, Linux and Unix system also provide a graphical user interface. So this time we are going to use the command line user interface using the shared program. Okay? So that is a command line interface and the graphical user interface. And also another main job of the operating system is how operating system organized. I briefly introduced how operating system is working. Or in other words, when you start uh, start what the power on your system, what's going on? So we briefly uh, reviewed the, such a process of the starting the your operating system. So what happened when you start up the operating system? It create many processes. So which means the Ex program execution. That is a process, right? So, what is the process? So that of instruction can be accessed by the CPU should be reside on the memory. So that is the process. In other words, that is the program execution. Too many. How many processes? So many, right? So when you check the uh, number of process on your the laptop or the Windows, so always there are so many the processes are running together. So we need, in other words, uh, the operating system should be able to manage such a program execution or process. Because of that, because of the importance of the process management, the if you take a look at any the textbook or the any article regarding to the operating system, half of them are discussing about process management. So this is another important job. All the other, the mostly the program execution means, the process means it's a computation, right? What does that mean, computation? It's a process the instruction in your CPU. That is the execution, that is the computation. There are two main operations in the computer system. One is the computation, right? Using the instruction and the mostly in the CPU. Another one is I.O. operation. What happened during the I.O. operation? What CPU can do? Actually, there's nothing. CPU cannot do anything during the I.O. operation. Why? Because I.O. operation will be performed by I.O. devices, not CPU. That is the problem. That is the one clue how to enhance the performance of your system. Who will see later how to utilize the such a, which is called the I.O. wait. During the I.O. waiting time, CPU need to wait until response. Without data, return data, CPU cannot do anything, right? So just wait. So in other words, such a program execution computation, and in addition to that, the I.O. operation is another. So there are three main services provided by the operating system. One is Interface. Using interface, you can do the two main jobs. Uh, you can expect the two main the services. One is the process program execution. Another one is I/O, the I/O operation. So this is the just the basic one. Here. In addition to that, actually, operating system provide more services. Okay? 
So that is the main job, main services. In addition to that, there are more services. So file system. What is a file? Set up a program, so some of the program can be called the file. Right? So data. Set up an instruction, it's a data, everything. Right? Right? So not only just the programming code and the data and the everything, sometimes even network connection can be considered as the file. Everything is a file in terms of operating system. So file is what? It's a data structure. Anyway, operating system is a software for what? Computer. Computer can understand only the 0 or 1, as we know. Okay? That 0 or 1 should be organized. Okay? Well organized, well formatted. That means that is the, the data structure. Everything the, in your computer system is a, the data structure. Then, when we keep the, any data or any information, anything, we are going to use the file. So file is actually inside. It's a sequence of bytes. That's it. However, depending on how to organize such a byte, it can be programming the instruction, it can be data, it can be image, it can be video. Okay? Then which means we should be able to manage such a in number of files. So how can we manage how many files? Many. Yeah, many files, right? Why don't you check the virus? How many? It's a hundred thousand or sometimes almost millions of the file. Whether or not you create, realize that. Sometimes you even create, it's already there and sometimes automatically created. So there are too many files. So we need to some software service from the operating system to manipulate such a file using what? File system. File system is also software. It's a part of operating system. Sometimes it can be sold separately. You need to process the file system by paying the money. One time when we purchase the Sun operating system, Sun OS, so it's a five point something. So we expect that when we purchase the Sun microsystem, the server, they actually the bundle the operating system. We expect everything, but they. The Sun OS didn't include the compiler. Sun OS didn't include the file system. The, so we need to purchase, we need to pay the money. Okay? So, so that is the file system. Okay? Who will see in the operating system? The, probably the chapter 10, 11 will we see what is the file system manipulation also. How many processes? Many processes. Okay? Nowadays, the uh, modern, the contemporary operating system, the manage the many process, which means they are independent. No, they work very closely. They need to collaborate, which means they should be able to communicate each other. So communication is another important. The so in your warming up project, you will implement creating the process and child processes, and also implementing communication. Okay. There are different ways of the communication. Anything? You know? Like you know, the network. So every time you use it, you connect to the network, right? Yeah. So that's one of the ways to communicate. But the in operating system, they use inter-process communication. communication. In short, it's the IPC. So IPC uses several different methods. What we see? The briefly about the what kind of method we are going to use, uh, the, the operating system use, and also in your warming up project, you need to select one of the way. Many of the students select TCP IP protocol. That's also one way, client to server the environment. Also, you can use the, the message or the queue for the communication. Okay? Uh, either any way is fine. So in your the project zero, you will implement a very simple the inter-process uh, process communication. Okay. Then, so your OS is perfect? Probably not. So sometimes intentionally we create uh, some exception or error. So operating system should be uh, hand, should handle such an error. Detect the error and the do something. Okay. Sometimes, may, actually many of the time, many of the time operating system ignore such an error. Why? We do not have the technology skill. Mm -hmm. 
running many of the time. For example, why do you say deadlock? You know, the, you heard about the deadlock. Deadlock means waiting each other, right? So I'm holding this one, he's holding his turn, I need his turn. But he need my the pointer. So we are keep asking each other. So is there any solution? No, it's a deadlock. So until the one of the person drops the, their item or the kill, <laughs> I cannot kill him. But uh, there are several ways, but the current situation is a deadlock. We are going to wait each other. It's a serious problem in any computer system. Because they, we have the many processes, it's a consumer, but we need a very limited the resource. As I said, if we have unlimited resource in our computer system, we don't, you don't have to take the Discord. Probably there's no operating system class. It's part of the just computer architecture, that, well, the programming course. It's very simple. Whenever you need, whenever the process need, the resource, just allocate, allocate, assign. There's no management, there's no competition, there's no deadlock. But because we have the limited resource, we are waiting each other. How can we solve the problem? There are many, many ways. So as I said, so we will learn the, in the chapter seven, how to handle such a deadlock. Solution in terms of operating system? Process management? Block. Lock. Actually, ignore. <laughs> Operating system does not care the deadline. Why? Is it because of the less important? No, it's a very critical. Sometimes your entire system will be stuck, hang. But operating system, many of the operating system ignore such a deadline. Why? For example, I have the almost 70 students here. So each student has the, the very small problem every day. So I'm feeling the bad in the morning, and the, my girlfriend is uh, not responding to my message. And uh, do I need to take care of and s the give the solution for each and every case? No. If I did, I cannot do main, my, my main job, right? I'd like to, as an advisor or a teacher, I'd like to help all the students, but I cannot do everything, so I can focus on. So you are responsible for your the, the individual problem or the, the individual matter. So I'm going to focus on my main job, so like the teaching or research. So same thing in operating system. Operating system cannot take care if operating system takes care of the deadlock. Deadlock is very hard to detect, not easy. It's almost MP hard. We will see what is MP hard, probably you learn. So there is no optimized solution. So, and also, it takes a long time. And the two. so, solution, operating system ignore, then each process, each application is in charge of such a managing data. Because of that, what did you do when your system is slow or the stop or hang? Control C. What the turn it off, turn it off. Okay, so operating system, the usually the doesn't care about that because of the performance issue. Okay, so error detection is the same thing. Not all the errors or the exception will be handled by operating system. Some of them, sometimes intentionally, we uh, create the exception like the divide by zero, divide by zero. It's a serious problem. We cannot uh, keep such a result in the. So we are using like the trap of. The, like the part kind of the interrupt signal, so inform to the operating system. Okay. And also, as we define the last week, the operating system, so like the resource, the allocation, control and resource, or the or first allocate, then the control, that is one of the main jobs. So we are, the operating system is right to allocate we have unlimited resource, we don't have to worry about the, this one, but unfortunately, we have the limited resources, so we need to uh, fairly allocate. Or sometimes we can consider the priority. So we will see the, some of the examples of the resource allocation, like the CPU allocation or memory allocation uh, in the middle of the semester. Accounting. What is accounting? Account? 
your values. Banking account. <laughs> so my the brother in law says uh, he is the professional accountant, the handling the tax. Okay. So is it the same account? <coughs> Probably it's a similar. The accounting nowadays is very important. So each process, how much the resource is uh, allocated and used for each pro pro uh, process. Okay, we need to manage the how much CPU are used for the process A, how much memories are used for the process A or process B, something like that. Such information are called accounting. Accounting means is the keep track of and many the resource in your the computer system. Why this one is important? Yes, first reason is the performance. So if we allocate the entire resource to one student, if I spend all the time only one, one student, the other student will be uh, will comply. So overall the reputation will be reduced. It's the same thing. So in the operating system we need to make also nowadays it's more critical, more important because of how the computing and where the virtual machine. So, for example, AWS. Have you ever used the AWS? So, what is AWS? It's a service for computing system. I need the uh, ten gigabyte the memory and the i5, the Intel Core i5, the dual core memory, uh, the CPU and the one terabyte hard disk drive for 10 computer. Okay? What is the easiest way and fastest way to get order through the uh, internet? Yes, you can do that, but you need to set up and deliver and everything. If, you, if we, you are computer science, so it's not a big deal, but uh, for the, just uh, the small business owner, it's not easy. So if you log on the AWS and just uh, the uh, give the information about the, your credit card, then the, just clicking the separate, the couple of minutes, you will get such a research. Really, it's so just a simple, just a try, but don't forget to erase all your system, otherwise it will be paid every month. It will, the, you, they will, AWS will, the bill based on your usage. How can you check the usage? using accounting information. So accounting information is also not only just a performance issue, but also the business issue is very critical nowadays. I knew, I have used, I'm using, but the, the AWS in my, the, another class, the big data system, but the, some of the students are not comfortable to put their credit card information. Even I, the, Accidentally, the pay this uh, 30 bucks, I think the 30 bucks per month the for three, the month, month. So just in case you do not delete your systems, will be uh, paid recursively. But sometimes I can get the credit from the AWS by submitting the proposal. So if you are interested in the retailer system with the AWS, <laughs> In case I have the credit, the the coupon number from the AWS, the Amazon, the, we may have a chance to use the AWS. Otherwise, you can try. Okay. So by paying the 10 bucks or 20 bucks, so you can use the big data system or the NoSQL database or some other operating system, Windows, anything. You uh, can have the experience to use other operating system. Okay, it's worthwhile. Yeah. Nowadays, it's uh, uh, needless to say there is a protection and security is uh, uh, more important because we have the network security. Most of them are related to the network security in terms of the accounting, sec uh, the, account, the security, the operating system security. The we will deal with a little bit how to what is the strategy of the uh, security and protection, uh, but the mostly it will be discussed. Is there any this alarm? Because not this building, right? Because uh, every semester, uh, sometimes it's scheduled, sometimes accidentally <laughs> by our alarm. So 
I think the most of the students are continuing students, so probably no. In case of alarm or the fire alarm, if whether one is drill or the real situation, you need to get out of the building. Okay. Do sometimes in case the serious situation, do not pack the all your stuff. Just leave. leave. That is the, for your the safety. Okay. So this is just an overview of the operating system service. So this is a hardware. This is a huge. So this is a hardware part, the bottom, and this is the user. Or anything in between, this is called the operating system. Sometimes the, this, the services, group of services, are considered as the operating system. Some of the, uh, the definition include everything. It doesn't matter whether you have the micro or the macro definition of the operating system. Anyway, we are going to deal with the in between the user and hardware. That includes this kind of service. And system calls is a system library. It's a system-wide API. We will see a little bit about the, such a system call. Eventually, you are going to use a system call system library in your project. Okay. And uh, otherwise, this, if you are just using API, programming API, so your project, it's not like the system programming. It's not like the operating system project. It's just a programming project in other courses. Some of the students complain, why need, I need to use the system library? The, we have all the Java provider some the, uh, the API to create the process or the other things, the uh, file, the main but but this is the system programming at the system operating system classes so we are going to uh, use the system programming rather than the uh, the application programming. Okay. On top of that, we have the user interfaces. Okay? So first, the user interface. So C L I command line interface. Have you ever used the command line interface? Which one? Linux. The what kind of the two, you want to you want to provide the many, the most of the, the Linux system provide the many shared programming. So you, if you use any of the shared programming, shared the program, so that is a mostly graphical user interface. So in my case, I have used the graphical user interface the first time, 1983. Very long time ago, so almost four years ago. So I learned the computer uh, first time using the DOS. Have you ever used the this? Yeah. It's also operating system. Operating system. Okay. It's uh, basically the command line interface. So at the time, uh, I learned what is the copy, right? What is the delete? And these are the commands provided by this operating system DOS. Then eventually this DOS is adapted by Windows. That is the MS DOS. So you probably, not DOS, you probably learn the MS DOS. So it's on top of this version 7 or 6 from 6 or 7, whatever. So it's MS DOS. So MS DOS means it's operating system. What about the Windows? It's, a, it's also operating system. That was the biggest problem of the Microsoft. So until the Windows 98, I'm not sure, 98, 95, 95, they have the two operating systems in one system. One is the Windows, another one is MS-DOS. That caused a serious problem. So later, I, the Microsoft gave up the MS DOS. Then user complain. Even though they provide the CLI, that is just a CMD. CMD is not the just uh, it's not operating system. It's just uh, interface only. Okay, interface only. So from the Windows, I didn't use the Windows 8, but not sure. But Windows 10. They adapt, bring back the such a command line interface to operate PowerShell. So this is similar as the Linux system. Okay, so that is a command line. 
What does it mean, interpreter? Comment, sometimes it's called a command interpreter. What is the interpreter? Translator? Yes, that makes sense. Interpreter? Loadable language? Line by line compiler. It's also compiler. Okay? Most of the compiler that you are familiar with is uh, you have a source code and compile. Compile means convert the high level language into the machine language. Then it's a set of instructions, then eventually you can execute, which means you can copy the instruction to the memory that executed. Okay? On the other hand, command line interpreter means whenever you type the command, that command will be interpreted, compiled. There are many such interpreters, not only just the MS-DOS and the DOS, but also the shell program. Most of the shell program use the such an interpreter. Also, if you are going to take the database, database also provide a command line interface, they use such as CLI, the, the interpreter. Whenever you type, the, for example, select from where, enter, then it will be compiled. That is the interpreter. One of my favorite, the project is implementing the interpreter. Okay to get familiar with the, the operating system interface. Can you implement interpreter? It's not that difficult, okay? It's uh, easier than compiler, of course, okay? So compiler, I took, unfortunately, the UV, our program, uh, does not offer the compiler class, but the compiler class is a very, very fun and uh, interesting. So you can actually develop the compiler, like the C compiler. The, in my case, I, I, my, my classroom project was the PCAT software. It's very simple, the program language. So you can, it's just a matching, right? If you see the if, if it has the assembly code. So you can just uh, change, compile, so translate. That is a compiler. But the anyway program, your high level language is a language. It's much more complicated. Okay? That includes the uh, syntax uh, and mostly it's a recursive the function that you can use. So, however, interpreter is a one line. It's not the programming source code. So it's much easier to implement. So at the time you can use a regular expression or the other, the technique for the program, but it's not very complicated. Okay, then they are implemented by the Share the program, okay? Share program is the your the uh, program provided by programs to provide by the operating system for command line interface. So share program is not just interface only. Nowadays, the share program can be considered as the programming itself. It can do it. So very powerful, like the Perl or Python. Anyone? Who are taking the Python course? Yes, a lot. Why you are taking the Python? It's just the CLI, one of them. Because you, you can do a lot of data management, data analytics using the Python language. So nowadays it's a shared program. Even if you are interested in the system administrator, I know that some of you guys uh, want to be uh, the data administrator or the system administrator, including network administrator, definitely you should be able to use such a shell program. Sometimes you can code. This uh, group of the shell command, command will be called as a shell programming, so you can learn. Like the Perl language, I believe many of you already use the Perl language. Perl is the one of the examples of the such a uh, shell program. Okay. What kind of shell we have? Why is called the shells? We will see later the structure of the operating system. We can start, we have the operating system, or sometimes kernel, and there are many additional programs, and most outside we have the interface to the user. This is the hardware, this is a user, CLI, so this is the program. 
beside uh, the, this layer, most outside layer, is a shell to cover. Okay. Also, it provides abstraction level. You don't have to worry about the inside what's going on. So this is called the shell. What kind of shell we have? Bone shell, she shell, cone shell, there are a lot. Okay. So if you are familiar with this one, definitely. Also, if you want to be an administrator in the computer system, definitely you should know. So they are different shell programming, but they are common. Okay, so you don't have to uh, learn each and every the shell, the language, only one, then you can get familiar with the, the other. Each one has their own characteristic, but uh, these are the uh, most common, the shell language. Okay. Their main job is, as I explained, the get the command and interpret, then execute. Okay, the operating system will be in charge of that execute and also return the result to the user. So that is the main job. So in other words, the most uh, main part of the shared programming is a set of commands. Then they provide some additional statement like the if then else, while loop, for loop, or also sometimes you can implement your own command using what? <coughs> the system core, system library, so that is the one here. For example, Perl. Who, de who developed the Perl? I forgot the name of the guy. But I know his job. His job? What is uh, his job? Who developed the Perl? System administrator. So the main motivation of developing the Perl program is he tried to make e his job easy. Okay, so he developed uh, something command to monitor the system. He tried to develop uh, something command, okay, that deal with the file, read the file, write the file, his own language, that C language, then he made the several command, then by combining this command, it's a per language, okay. The, similarly, the other, the shell programming, has the same idea, okay? So in our the exercise set, we are going to use the, uh, the Linux, the most popular Linux shell, the best shell, okay? This is an example of the bone shell, okay? From where? From MacBook, okay? So using iOS. So many of the MacBook users never use such a command line interface. It's a very popular. That's the one of the reasons the old guy, they love to use the MacBook instead of Windows because they familiar with such a command line interface that you can still use the same interface using MacBook. Okay, so we will see the basic architecture of the uh, iOS Mac OS. That part of that is actually the main branch of Unix system. It's a BSD Berkeley, the Unix system they adapt. Android is a fully Linux based. And uh, even iOS, the, your the cell phone, iPhone is also actually the Linux. They are, they have the common, the end system, believe it or not. But Microsoft, what is the name of the Microsoft? Windows. Windows. Windows Phone, right? Yeah, Windows. What's the name of the OS? No, the, Windows it's, Windows it's the same Windows. thing, right? They, they try to focus on the same operating system say, and interface, but they are the different. So they, Android and uh, iPhone, you don't have to fight each other. <laughs> on the other hand, we are familiar, many of us are familiar with the graphical user interface. So graphical user interface, instead of uh, uh, explaining details, so you already use the uh, a lot. Just briefly take a look at 1970 is usually the very, the, you can see the 1970 a lot when you are using computer. Why? Default, the date and time is 1970 in computer system, right? It's the first time to develop the Linux system, the Unix system, okay? 
Okay, so you cannot see the default time 1960 or 1950. Most of the system, if you run out of battery, so each system has uh, anyway without power. Even though you do not charge it, there is a uh, uh, the battery inside. So that is, if you lose all the power, then it will be set as a 1970. Anyway, now from the 1970, the we have the early vertical user interface is uh, uh, the zeros. You can see it's the same almost. Uh, you can see the mouse pointer, and there is a mouse and keyboard and the monitor. It's almost the same as the current interface. Not much changes actually in terms of the interface. Human HCI nowadays is one of the area of the computer science. <coughs> Human computer interaction. Okay, it's very important because I believe mouse and the monitor and keyboard style they are not the very close to the human the interface okay and even we are using the finger a lot the swipe swipe is not the very close to the human the interaction okay because I, sometimes i feel the pain and the this is so we try to find the we are familiar with as a human being we are familiar with hearing okay and watching and the motion gesture and also language the natural language so the people who are who are interested in the, such a TCI, so they try to find the more human friendly the interface okay but anyway this is true you see here oh, okay. so this is a all the bus still use the basically the for our graphical user interface Unfortunately, unfortunately, we do not have the Xerox system the, in our computer and IT industry, but the Xerox contribute a lot for the computer system long time ago. So this is one of the five systems. Their computer is a personal computer system, still same, right? And also, this is a, a file manager. I have used uh, such a file manager. So when we use the Windows 3.1, the Windows at the time, it didn't provide such a convenient file manager system. So this can be still used for like the, if you are using FTP, the client or SSH client, it's like the similar from source and destination. Instead of drag and drop, so sometimes this is um, the much more convenient for me. <laughs> the personally, I like the such an interface. Probably that is because of I'm an old guy, but this is uh, uh, 1980, okay? Have you ever used one of these? Probably not, but uh, you can see the similar interface right now, Windows 2, if, but almost the same as Windows 3, which is a commercial version, and then, what is the OS 2? Have you ever heard about the OS 2? OS 2 is the operating system from IBM okay for personal computer actually in terms of architecture and everything OS2 is better than Windows but unfortunately IBM gave up to continue to use the OS2 because of the business issues the so Microsoft was a successful still success I'm not sure whether they are struggling right now, but anyway, it's a true. The Bill Gates is one of the richest guy in the world, so they success then IBM gave up. But I have used uh, most of the current the interface that we are using or that we are familiar with. It's already implemented OS 30 years ago in the IBM. But I don't know what happened at that time. They didn't do any marketing in IBM. Only they used the, the, this operating system for their mainframe because I, I think, I guess, the IBM focus on the mainframe, the expensive one, the big system, server side, not personal computer. They didn't pay attention to the importance and the big market of the personal computing at that time. Then they lose the business. Still, some of the IBM mainframe or the IBM server, they, they basically used their, very limited they use, but the uh, one. 
And this, I probably, I believe that you have used this. This is the still the same the interface. They keep using the 20, 30 years ago, the interface. Windows changed a lot, but the Windows itself is still used. Not only for the, uh, the operating system, but your the Visual Studio family, the product, they use the Windows as a basic the workplace. This is a Mac OS. The, I'm not a big fan of the Mac OS or iOS. That doesn't mean I love the Android or the other Microsoft, but just for preference. So, but Mac OS, uh, it was the 1994. 1994, I had a chance to visit Hawaii. Then I stayed uh, six or seven months with, in the University of uh, Hawaii, the man who had the canvas. The, my roommate used the, this one the, before that, the Aqua, the old side uh, uh, Mac OS interface. Before that, I have used only Windows 3.1, very limitedly. It is totally different, the interface. So then, however, my roommate use that computer only for game. At the time, even whether or not the, you believe the, there was a game for the SimCity, the 30 years ago, SimCity. <laughs> Do you play the SimCity? Uh, probably not nowadays. SimCity is kind of managing, developing the city, okay? So using such a nice interface. Nowadays, it's a touch screen based, okay? As I said, touch screen is still not very far from the human friendly. So who knows if you develop, so just from the simple idea, okay, even the touch screen, who developed the touch screen? It's from MIT, long time ago. I cannot remember the time and who developed. It's just for the kind of the classroom project. There, just to think of the, what if instead of the using mouse, the touch the monitor directly, they develop the prototype system from the IBM, then nowadays everybody uses. I don't think MIT uh, collect the royalty or the license, but uh, for the academic purpose they develop. So who knows, if you have any idea. So I thought about the uh, five, so when I joined the UB, I actually uh, had a lecture for the student, the operating system. What if we have the something, the virtual keyboard, okay? Using something sensor, so instead of typing, so just recognize a finger, fingering. But, so when I check the internet, Google, the Apple already, the five pattern for such a same idea. They didn't specify how to, the recognize a fingering, but they said uh, just a sensor, okay? It can be laser or it can be visual camera, but they already propose. So which means if I open the, this one, there is a something, the light then, when I type the, this, the moving, it recognize the finger, okay? Also it can be nowadays used for the security, okay? Not just touching, so, so it's in between gesture and the touch screen is kind of in between. So this is a touch screen based interface. Then, that is the interface level. Then, a little bit move down from the previous slide, it's a system core. So I already explained that, what is a system core. System core is the, you know the API. What is the API? It's an application programming interface. You don't have to develop the each and every function or library. There are built-in or somebody already developed. That is the benefit of using object-oriented, the programming. So if you have the, the, the class, you can just import, then use it, okay? It's the same idea, basically, in the non-object-oriented programming, functional, the programming like the C. If you have the library already, so you can the include. It's a similar idea, but anyway, so, you can use uh, such a existing library that is a programming API, okay? Because of that, it's easy to code, learn. The only thing you need to do 
no is where is such a document. Then you can just check the input and output data type or the input and output object or the specification, let's see. Then you can focus on your own algorithm. Same idea in the system programming. It's not clear what is the system programming, what is the application programming, but lawfully, system programming is a programming to deal with directly operating system and hardware stuff. On the other hand, the application is on top of that, it's a full user specification, user requirement. I'd like to compute one, I'd like to add up one, two, three, two, the ten. Okay? That is the application program. But I'd like to read the information from hard disk drive. I need a program. Then you can develop the program. That is a, to read the data. To do that, you need to know specification of the, your device program, and uh, if you do not have the device program, you need to implement uh, such a device program, the low-level programming also. Okay, that is a system programming. Even system programming is not <coughs> easy. If you need to implement every the input and output or the process creation, everything. So, operating system provide very limited number of library, mostly it's around the 200 library. Okay. That is the same thing as the API. Okay, it's a built-in library, built-in code for system programming. Okay, that is the system code to differentiate from API. Okay, so for example, if you are interested in the system programming, what system administrator, you do better know the what is the system core or system library. There are three main types of the system core system library. As you know, Windows 32 API. Mm -hmm. The Windows provide their own system library. You are already familiar, some of you are familiar with to use the system 32 API. Another one is Linux, what Unix based system. They are from POS6 API. This is called the POS6 API. It's a system library. Even though you are using the Ubuntu, you are using the Debian OS, so their system library, slightly different name, okay? Slightly different name. However, they are from the same ancestor that is a POS6 API. It's not comparable, which means when you, com when you compile, with the different, on the different OS, it will be error because it's a different language, different specification, but you can easily port, migrate, okay? So that is a, so in this lab, in this the course, we are going to, because you are, one of the reasons I'm not very familiar with the Windows programming, <laughs> and that is that also you are familiar with the Windows programming, there are a lot of resources, even we have the, uh, the course to teach the Windows-based programming or web-based programming. So in this class, the, since the last year, the, we'd like to offer the exercise that based on the POSIX API system core. Okay. Very basic level. So if you already have the experience, it will be just a review. Then, this textbook is also the consider Java API is the third category of the system core, which means Java is the operating system. No. What do you think? Java, Java itself is not an operating system, it's a language. However, architecture of Java, how does your the class is running? So you have the Java source code. Okay, class, so it, so after compile, what happened? What is the result of the compile? Byte code is the class Y. It's where? Memory? No, it's just when you see your hard disk drive or file system, you can find the same name of your class, the class file. Okay, then we are not 
the discussing about the programming, object-oriented programming, this is the operating system class. So, this one can be used, okay? You heard about the Java can compile once, running everywhere, which means most of the other program languages, if you are using the compile, the code compile, the, which means it's a binary code, you need to to learn the, such a binary code in other operating system, you need to compile it again, right? It doesn't work most of the time, 99%, it doesn't work. But Java, if you compile the operating system A, you can just copy, then run it again. How? Java Using Java virtual machine. In other words, when you install the Java, you probably install Java JDK or Runtime module or runtime environment. It's a R yeah, 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 yeah. G -R -E? yeah. J R E. So Java runtime yeah. the environment. That is the Java virtual machine. What is that? It's a hardware. There is an operating system. Then there is a user application. Most of the application running depends on operating system running on top of operating system. They call the what? System core, system library. We will see later. But Java is in between them. So this, in terms of class file, this is like a operating system. Why? Because it's in between application user and hardware. Okay? And also Java virtual, through the Java virtual machine, you can do the most of the thing that we have discussed so far regarding to operating system. So Java virtual machine can be considered as the operating system. But it basically calls the operating system. It's not, I don't yes. agree that, but this is the opinion of the, this, the textbook, okay? So if we, the open, the make the broad definition of operating system, even Java, the virtual machine can be considered as the okay. operating system. Okay. Personally, I don't agree, but uh, so there's no clear definition in any subject. So that's the def the suggestion of the textbook. So in both the concept, it can be considered as the, the operating system. So Java API so can be another type of the system core. Because of that, in your project, I'm not going to the accept the Java API for including the virtual the project zero. Why? Using Java API, you can create the process very easily. Communicate very easy. You can use the Java API. Right? One of the main purpose of API is to make the developer easy to develop. It's too easy without understanding any mechanism. So I'm not going to allow to implement your project zero using Java. So Java, everything is a threat. We will see later, right? It doesn't make sense. How many processes will be created when you learn the Java API, Java application? No. It's running on? Top of virtual machine. You have only the Java virtual machine, the process. Then inside there are a uh, there are a number of threads. So physically, very if I'm picky, so there's no creating the process using the Java. So for your practice, so in your the project zero, why don't you use the Windows API or the Postfix, the any the Linux API. What we see the next week? The day. How many more minutes? Ten. Ten? Yeah. Only ten? Yeah. Really? Little bit speed up. Okay. Next class, we are going to continue the lecture a little bit more. Okay. Then we will have the exercise lab. So that is the reason. We don't have to mention about this. I think that if you read this textbook, this the author likes the Java, the concept. Yeah. And also, this is the how 
So operating system and the application program used the, the, the system code system library. The, for example, this one. This is a, just a simple code of one to read the data okay, from the file. So you can open, open is the system library. And uh, after that is the status of your file and open and the send file is the send the information bit by string to the file. Then if you write everything and close, just a number of, is there any the logic? Well, it's a very simple. So by the finding the proper system core, you can implement that this is a copy command. Okay? So that is the typical example of the system programming. System programming, it doesn't need a very high programming skill. It's a less, the, it doesn't require any decoration, like the very nice interface or very nice, the, the mess, no. System programming needs just uh, the minimum, okay? Because the main purpose is the performance. This is a example of the system programming. Using the Windows API, it will be it's the same thing using the their API, be the file, write the file. So this is a comparison between the Windows API and Cortex API. You can see the difference. Then how does the system core, system library work when a when a when an application program the code such as the system library? So, as we have seen before, this is the interface, this is the hardware, there is the operating system, then in between there is a system core. System core actually is in between the user application program or the interface and operating system. In other words, when a user program the code, the system library, so there are two different modes. It's called the dual mode. One is a user mode and another one is a kernel mode. When a user calls the system call, like the, this one, this, 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 the system call, then actually application is not in charge of executing such a system library. Instead, operating system itself will execute. Why? First, performance. Performance is always a big issue in the operating system because we have limited resource, but huge, the processes, huge consumer. So if we operating system allow each process to directly access the hardware system resource, operating hardware resource, everybody want all the resource. Not only just the performance, but the, what if? the application program, hold the file and never release. Then the other process, the other, the consumer cannot use such a file. So because of that, whenever system code is the invoke, then the, this one change it. Does change what? Change the status of the application program process from user mode, then kernel mode to the kernel mode. Then Operating system is in charge of to run such a the system core. Then once this one is done, return. Another reason is security, okay, protection. Okay. Then because to access the hardware, you need to give the all the permission to the application program, which is not the safe. So because of that, the move and the dual mode okay, between application and the corner mode. Problem is how to manage such a, you need to send, so from application to the corner, you need to inform what kind of the system code. And also corner should return the any returned data, okay? Whether this is okay, whether there is any output. So to do that, there are two main the ways, one is you can use a register, so fast, okay, easy to implement. Problem, small, okay. So how can we? 
Well, sometimes we have the innumerable huge input parameter value should be informed to the corner. How can we extend the storage? What is memory, right? Memory is so we can use the memory, the structure to communicate. So instead of the directly use the register, register has a point address of the memory where the your is kind of a common area area between kernel and your application program. Okay. So what types of the system core? As I said, the uh, lawfully more or less the two hundred the system library system core. But uh, we can classify such a system core is to the one is a process control, another one is a file management, the, the next one is a device management, and some information, the maintenance, and also communication. So these are the, such a just a grouping. Okay. Also, you can always use nowadays Google. Okay, well, you, you don't have to memorize all details of the name of the system code. Okay, instead, if you want to find, because each and every operating system, even though they are following the same, the POSIX, the system code, their names are slightly different, so you can find the proper system code and the input and output parameter the using the Google or manual. When I learned the uh, operating system, I used the man command, you will be introduced. So during the exercise, so how to use the manual command. Okay, this is the most powerful. So slide. So you don't have to open the, uh, the windows, either explorer to search the Google. Instead, you can search the manual. Sometimes you can use the K, it's a keyword, man minus K. But you will practice in the exercise like the next time. Oh, the security is another part of the system core. Okay, so these are the this slide shows the some limited example for each category of the system core between Windows and the Unix. So we will you will practice the, this part. Okay, but after you understand the what is a system core and the, you are familiar with the Visual Studio, the IDE, then, then you can practice the, this part also. Right? In our class, we will use we will practice a fork, exit, ex, ec, is exit or exit, and the wait and the open it and the read and write and get PID and select the point and many of these. The system code we will practice in that exercise. Then, what kind of program language it can be used for the system? The core system library? C. Yeah. So, as I said, you can, you have a friend, best friend with the Java or the C sharp or whatever, but you should get married with C, C language if you want, if you want to survive in the IT or computer science. So, most of them are based on the C. Some part of the code need to use the directly use hardware part or some specification so you need to use assembly code directly assembly code so roughly 20 percent of them are the assembly code because of that what about the what is the most popular the database management system oracle right somebody said oracle is the kind of operating system really so because of that, Oracle had had passed had a project to develop database management system operating system. They developed. Nobody used. So they gave up. But uh, it is true. DBMS directly access to hardware is between the hardware and operating system and uh, hardware and the user and also their code. 80%, 70%, 80% are coded by the C, then the other, A, they actually they use the assembly code in, to develop the DBMS. Okay, but mostly the C. So if you are familiar with the C language, it's a very easy to use. What if I never use the C language? This is a good time. 
No? It's a good time. Anyway, to survive here, so see, it's not very complicated because we are not going to handle the pointer. Pointer is one of the problems, <laughs> right? So half of the students who learn the C language give up when we start to learn the pointer. And another half will give up when we learn string. String is nothing but pointer, right? So that's the same problem. Anyway. So, but we are not going to uh, learn the details about the such a pointer. So, these are the examples. I already introduced the MS DOS. MS DOS is the Microsoft operating system long time ago, and until the Windows 91. So, how many processes can you learn? So one process, it's a simple operating system. So which means that command is, so we have a kernel, and we need an interpreter, right? So definitely we need a compiler of the user input through the command line interface. If that is a process, then that process, what does that mean, execution? So copy the code into the memory. So process will be allocated to the memory. That is a basic architecture of the, your entire system. So probably when uh, the MS-DOS or the DOS was developed, they imagined this one. What is this, by the way? It's a memory, OK? So from 0, 0, 0 to the FSSN. Okay? It's a memory. The structure is a memory that we can allocate. So creating, actually, the creating process, the process means we have the C library, C code that can copy, read the data from hard disk drive, the command, okay? Then copy that. By following there are, this is a very high level data structure. There's something process data structure. So who will learn? What are they? Okay? There are some heap, right? Do you remember that? And uh, text information and code information, and we will see the, such a details, the data structure. Why defining such a data structure? We can just copy. That's it. That is the creating process. That is the fork and EXAC system library. We will see the details. DSD, the Unix system, they support multi process. So you can, we can, the run. The same time, the multi processes. That means that doesn't mean the CPU can execute the same time all three instructions. No, but instead we can run the three process. We can copy three process into the memory. Okay. So then, if you are able to use such a system library, that means it's a system program. Believe me, if you have the experience on the system programming, your the paycheck will be higher than just the software develop. develop. Okay. But not easy to get the, such an experience. But good news is uh, the Microsoft the, or the Apple, they are not the only operating system company. So there are many other, like the embedded operating system, that need a very small microprocessor and a small operating system. So uh, you can also think about not just uh, the programming developer, but also the system programming and system administrator also need uh, such a system program. I developed uh, several uh, system the program, but I was not good at the programming sir. Then eventually that system program, if the, your system program is part of your kernel, that will be Operating system, okay? What time? Uh, okay, so next class, we will continue the rest part of the, uh, this chapter, chapter two, then followed by the exercise lab. The so first exercise lab will not take a long time, so it's, uh, but we need your the pre-installation of the virtual machine, VM play or virtual dock, or, and also virtual machine, download the virtual machine. It takes a time. Okay. Any question? Don't forget your first quiz also. Thank you, and uh, see you next time.